Now that we have an understanding of what sound is, we could talk about something called phase. Let's look at our sine wave example. Imagine this sine wave represents one instrument or a sound playing. Now add another sine wave. As you can see, the waves are playing together identically. When the term in phase is used, it refers to two signals being totally in sync with each other. What would happen if we shifted one of the waves? Now we have signals that are out of phase. Phase can be measured in terms of time or degrees. One period or cycle of a sine wave represents 360 degrees. The correlation can be seen with these two graphs. When a phase shift occurs, this corresponds to a time shift of the wave. The wave shown below is 90 degrees behind the original wave. Or we could say there is a 90 degree difference between the original wave and the one below. With respect to audio, if we have a single wave of sound that is shifted in time, our ears would not know the difference. Once we have two or more waves with a phase angle difference between them, the human ear can immediately detect the difference. Let's see why. Let's add two identical sine waves together. We can do this by plotting the points in 90 degree increments. If we look at zero degrees on the first chart, we have a value of zero. If we look at zero degrees on the second chart, we have a value of zero. Zero plus zero is zero. So let's plot a zero on the third chart. Now if we look at 90 degrees on the first chart, we have a value of one. If we look at 90 degrees on the second chart, we have a value of one also. So one plus one is two. So let's plot a two on our third chart at 90 degrees. If we look at 180 degrees on the first chart, we have a value of zero. At 180 degrees on the second chart, we also have a value of zero. Again, zero plus zero is zero. So let's plot a zero on our third chart at 180 degrees. Next, if we look at 270 degrees on the first chart, we have a value of minus one. If we look at 270 degrees on the second chart, we have a value of minus one also. Minus one plus minus one is minus two. So let's plot a minus two on our third chart at 270 degrees. If we now look at 360 degrees on the first chart, we have a value of zero. If we look at 360 degrees on the second chart, we also have a value of zero. So again, zero plus zero is zero. So we can now plot zero on our third chart at 360 degrees. Now if we draw in the new wave, we see that we have created a sine wave that is twice as loud as the original wave. The new wave will sound exactly like the other waves, but twice as loud. I get asked all the time, if I want to thicken the vocals or guitars on my recording, can I just copy the vocal or guitar track and duplicate it to another track? If we apply the knowledge from our last exercise, then we know that all that does is just raise the volume of the original track by a factor of two. No different than adding two of the same exact sine waves together, hence twice the volume. There is no actual thickening taking place though. Then they would ask, well, if I pan one to a different speaker, won't that separate them in a stereo field? The answer is no. When you take a single track and leave the pan at zero, you are technically sending the same signal to both speakers. Since you just sent the same or duplicated signal to both speakers by panning each one hard left and hard right, it's no different than a mono signal coming out of both speakers. It might come out a little louder depending on the pan laws of your system, 
but we won't get into that right now. Let's see what happens when we take the same original waves, but shift one now by 90 degrees. If we look at zero degrees on the first chart, we have a value of zero. On the second chart, we have a value of minus one. Zero plus minus one is minus one. If we look at 90 degrees on the first chart, we have a value of one. On the second chart, we have a value of zero. One plus zero is one. If we look at 180 degrees on the first chart, we have a value of zero. On the second chart, we have a value of one. Zero plus one is one. Next, we'll look at 270 degrees on the first chart we have a value of minus one. On the second chart, we have a value of zero. Minus one plus zero is minus one. And lastly, at 360 degrees on the first chart, we have a value of zero. On the second chart, we have a value of minus one. Zero plus minus one is minus one. If we draw in the plots, our new wave looks nothing like the original waves we originally had. This also means it does not sound like the original wave either. On the topic of thickening, after I discuss how duplicating and panning identical tracks does nothing to thicken the sound, usually someone will suggest to take the duplicated track and shift it in time so it is different than the original. As you can see from the results, of adding the 90 degree phase shifted sine waves, this is a disastrous move. This actually destroys your sound and makes it very thin sounding. Now you might say, I don't plan on manually manipulating my tracks. So when else am I gonna run into phase situations? The answer is pretty much at all times. Phase is the number one issue that you are tackling to create great sound. And here are some examples. If you have two microphones positioned at different distances from the sound source, you've created a time difference between the two mic signals, which means you have created phase. Now apply this to 14 microphones on a drum kit. All 14 microphones have a different phase time relationship to the snare drum, and also a different time phase relationship to the tom-tom and the kick drum and so on. If you decide to record the bass guitar with a direct box and also a cabinet at the same time, phase will be induced since it takes more time for the signal to go through the amp, the cabinet, the electronics, the speaker, through the medium of air and all the way to the microphone compared to the more direct path of the bass and just the direct box. And finally, if you are sitting in front of your speakers in the control room and move over about two feet to the left from the center position, phase will be introduced since it will now take more time for the sound coming out of the right speaker to travel all the way to your ears compared to the left speaker. Let's try one more sine wave example. Let's use the original waves and have the second one shifted by 180 degrees. As we go through and start adding points, we notice they all zero out. In other words, complete cancellation has occurred. The cancellation could happen in the form of a sound wave or electronically. Imagine plugging in your CD player to your home stereo with some homemade cables, not knowing the cables for the left side was soldered backwards. This would mean electronically the left side of the audio would be 180 degrees out of phase to the right side. If we played our favorite CD, would the wiring situation fully cancel out the sound? Not exactly. Remember, we are listening to a stereo track which does not have the same exact information on the left and right sides. If it did, it would be considered a mono track. In that situation, we would have full cancellation because the left side would fully cancel out the right side. But since we are talking about a stereo mix, this is not the case. So what will happen? Well, let's think about this. Anything that is not exact on both left and right channels will still exist. 
anything that is the same on both will cancel out. This means everything panned to the center of the mix. Usually, this consists of the lead vocals, bass, kick, and snare. If those cancel out, then we are left with a mix that has a big hole in the center of it. Since reverb is usually stereo, we could hear the vocals in the reverb, but not the dry vocals too well. The bass, kick, and snare will lose all power, and we will only hear the results of the effects on them. This is the reason we try not to introduce phase into any of our systems. If we think about this concept applied to full spectrum audio, and not just one single sine wave, you can imagine any sort of phase introduced into a system will cause all sorts of random cancellation and additions across many frequencies at different times. Therefore, phase could really render your audio in a compromised condition if you don't have control over it.